Hey, it's Veronica with Craft Review. Today I'm doing a profile on a kitchen gadget called a Universal Food Chopper. This one's pretty detailed, so feel free to use the time index in the description to skip around to the parts that interest you. First, a little history. These were manufactured by LF&C from 1897 through 1965 when they went out of business. They were in Connecticut. They manufactured a lot of stuff under the Universal brand name. Here's one of their ads from back in the day. It seems like every household must have one of these choppers because they're really, really common. And because they're so common, they're super cheap. You can get one for almost nothing if you're willing to do some rust removal and restoring. Or for a little more, you can get one that's ready to use and has several kinds of blades. The chopper grinders are made entirely of cast iron, but since they aren't seasoned like a cast iron pan would be, they're usually silvery gray like this. These are the parts that make up the food chopper. There's a hopper assembly with a clamp at the bottom, an auger, a handle, and then these gear looking things are the grinder knives that control the size of the cut. There's also a wing nut and a thumb screw to hold everything together. There are several types of the grinder knives. I have four of the most common ones. From left to right, the first blade does a fine dice, the second one minces, the third crumbs, and the fourth is a nut butter attachment. The difference between them is how many teeth they have. The more teeth, the smaller the cut. The nut butter attachment has no teeth. It sits close to the front edge of the grinder and completely smashes the food. The universal food chopper comes in sizes double zero to three. This is a size one, so it's right in the middle. The hopper isn't big, it's maybe like the size of my fist. The blades are interchangeable between choppers from sizes double zero to two. I suspect the same blades would also fit a size three chopper, but I couldn't confirm that in my research. If anyone knows, please drop a comment below. For assembly, fit the auger through the back of the grinder with the threaded side in front. This makes it a little easier to hold the auger still when you put the handle on. Set the handle in place with the thumb screw. Put the grinder knife over the threads, rounded side facing forward, and loosely secure it with the wing nut. Don't bother screwing it on tightly. It doesn't improve the function, and it makes the handle harder to turn. Attach the grinder to a countertop or table using the clamp. The clamp has these little feet to help keep it in place, so keep in mind that it can leave dents like this in wood. If the only free hanging ledge you have is wood, you could prevent dents by sliding something like a silicone pot holder underneath the feet. This is a used, beat up IKEA table, so I'm going to live with the dents. Now I'm going to use the blades one by one to show what they do. There are quite a few articles and videos about using the food chopper to grind meat, which are really helpful, but I had trouble finding info about chopping other foods, so today I'm using vegetables, nuts, and bread. I'm dicing some carrots with this blade. As you can see, it's not a clean or pretty cut. Because the carrots are so hard, the pieces sort of explode as they're crushed and the outcome isn't uniform. I've found that the pieces come out more uniform in size with something softer like a bell pepper. Here are some jelly bellies for scale. The pieces are about a fourth inch in size. I'm using the second blade to mince up some summer squash. The consistency comes out like relish. When I'm adding stuff to the hopper, by the way, the size of the pieces are about one inch cubes. The next attachment says bread crumb on it, so I used it to make bread crumbs. They turned out as expected. I'm most interested in this last attachment. It says nut butter, so I'm gonna run some cashews through it and see how it does. The first time through it was hard to turn the handle. The cashews are finely crushed, but it's more like a crumb texture. I ended up having to put the mixture through the grinder half a dozen times and got it to this sort of cookie dough like consistency. This is pretty similar to when I've made cashew butter before. Now I'm gonna make peanut butter. I went through the same process as last time, putting it through several times. It turned out pretty well. It's definitely peanut butter. A little coarser than store bought, but it's still a spreadable consistency. Even though I had to put it through the machine several times, it took very little time and effort after that initial grind. So I could see myself using this to make batches of peanut and cashew butter. Whenever you're done using the grinder, run a piece of bread through it to make it easier to clean. Before washing, go ahead and take the handle off and set it aside. Disassemble the other pieces, then take them to the sink and punch the chunks of bread out of the holes in the grinder front. Wash everything in warm, soapy water. A bottle brush helps. Do the best you can to dry it after washing because the cast iron will rust really easily. Don't reassemble it until it's completely dry. This grinder is so small, all the pieces fit in my toaster oven, so I just throw them in the toaster oven to dry. If the pieces do ever get rusty, you can use a piece of steel wool to scrub the rust off, but don't use steel wool in regular washing. Now some pros and cons. I like that the chopper grinder can mince and grind stuff like a food processor, but is really compact. Mine came in this wooden box that only measures 11 by 5 by 5, about the size of a little kid's shoe box. So it definitely takes up less space than a regular food processor. And because of its size, it's easier to handle and clean than a food processor, in my opinion. 
It's really cool that it can make nut butter. Some food processors can't handle that. If I'm making pasta sauce or soup that calls for a lot of dicing, it can power through vegetables like crazy. It's also super cheap and virtually unbreakable. Even if it gets neglected and covered in rust, cast iron is almost never a goner. Things I don't like. The chopper part of the grinder, the way it dices the vegetables, it's pretty utilitarian. Like these carrots are perfectly fine for soup, but I wouldn't serve them in a salad to guests. It also doesn't have as many features and doodads as a food processor, of course. So if you want to slice and grate stuff, for example, you need something else to do that. The biggest downside, something that didn't come up in the video today, is that the back of the auger doesn't have a gasket. So when I'm dicing a lot of fruit or vegetables, juice starts to come out the back, like a lot. I solved this by putting a chair with a bowl underneath to catch the liquid, but it's a pretty big flaw. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them for me below. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, I would love to have you. Thank you for watching. Bye.